let's talk about a Singer 560. So I was asked to walk through a 560. I haven't taken out this 560 in over two years. So I guess we're going to have to walk through the manual page by page. The first page we have is the index. And we go through all the bits and pieces of the 560. This is where the YC5 came in. Um, they usually had a uh, river as well. Um, also, the lace carriage was very unique. My lace carriage is broken, and I didn't feel like putting in the river today. But I will put that in another day. We're going through the basic setup. Um, Singer likes you to use cakes and cones. Try not to use skeins. Usually these um, machines are packed pretty good with the accessory box on one side and your carriage on the other with a carriage lock. Your accessory box should have your curly cord and your power box and all the fun stuff in it. Um, here we're going through all of the standard carriage terminology, so curl cord, stitch dial, handle, etc. Um, they're kind of going through the knit contour, which is the same on most singers. Um, the pattern uh, panel is probably the most important thing to take note of. So when we actually get to loading a pattern, I will try and do as good a job as I can to try and explain it in my own way. Um, my 560 is stripped pretty bare because I refurbished two other ones and used all of my stuff from my 560 to bring up those 560s to their standard. I don't even have my Mylars anymore. I have to buy some for a 580 because that's just how I work. Um, this is just threading it up. The manual's pretty good on, on whoa, how to thread it. So I'm not going to go there too much. Casting on and stockinette knitting. Um, Singer loves to use the weave cast on. It, it is one of the better ones. Brother uses the cast on comb. I believe in doing a weave cast on with uh, waste yarn and then going on to your main yarn after about 10 rows. I also prefer a double E-wrap or E-wrap as opposed to just relying on a weaved cast on for your work. Um, for removing the fabric from the machine, I never have luck with just leaving raw edges, so I tend to do a latch tool or gate peg bind off. And I can go into that a little bit later in the videos when we get around to it. Um, page 15 is where we're at now and we're looking at the pattern card and here it's trying to tell you where to place your mylar on the set line so that your machine will inspect it and get it ready for knitting. Um, Okay, so the pattern controls, I'm going to move my uh, camera over so you can see it. The pattern controls, we have an inspect button, card buttons, point cam, go into the needle cam, and the card dial. Um, it is important that your inspect button is on when you're not knitting and off when you are knitting in pattern. The card feed buttons, if you want to reverse the pattern or um, have it advanced normal, those have to be in working order as well. If I remember correctly, this 560 does not have the card buttons working correctly, so I may not be able to show you how to reverse a pattern. 
point cams are pretty straightforward. There's one here and here. I guess you can't see that in my camera here. Okay, so the point cams are here and here. And you want to make sure that they are about two stitches in from where you're working. So if I have this at, let, let's say, 35, my patterning will be starting at about 33. That's uh, clear as mud, I know. Another important point when using these pattern cards is because they are 60 stitches wide, where the pattern ends on these mylars, that is where you have to put this little mark here. So this moves back and forth. These are your basic punch cards and they are 24 stitches across. You can kind of see the 24 here. So you want to set your um, width indicator to 24 so that it reads all 24 stitches. Um, this is the N1. This is where you set um, how centered your pattern is. If I move the N1 from 0 to, let's say, 5, this is where the patterning will start and it'll go all the way across. If I only want one instance of the pattern, then I will go, that's 22, and that'll be one instance only of the pattern. It will not go outside of these marks. It's kind of kind of confusing just hearing about it. When you get to the practical application of it, it's actually kind of neat. And in the manual, it actually shows with the lace how you can make a pattern go in a triangle up a, up a piece. So like if you're doing a fancy sweater front or something like that. In order to do just basic knitting, you do not need the mylars in or even the machine turned on. So we won't even worry about that right now. Um, I've been asked to start with the basics. So um, I've already done um, some videos on the 360 and that kind of went into it. So I'm going to try my best to slow down and, and try and be more understanding of what's going on so that we can get to the point where we're going to do a knit in feral hat, probably child sized. And I think we'll also do just a basic sock so I could show some short rowing. There are a lot of other videos out on basic knitting, but there's not really a lot on the 560. I hope this makes any sense. Before I walk into an actual lesson plan, let's have some fun.